There's no other funny man quite like him. He invented Blue Steel. Made the greatest war movie never made. And he's been making us laugh ever since he hit the big screen. He grew up wanting to make movies and along the way realised comedy was his forte. He first appeared on screen at the age of six and by ten he was making his own movies, usually starring himself. And clearly all the early leg work paid off. I've always wanted to be a director. Yeah. Yes. Ever since I was making movies like when I was a kid, Super did 8 you do movies. Like, oh, you did yes. your own Super 8? Yes. Stuff? Yeah. Wow. How did it feel to have a Panavision though? It's fun. It's bigger. Yeah. And you get to tell lots of people what to do. And Will you be di directing people, people it? People get to hate you. you know? Wait a minute. Not on your set. I didn't hear anything like that. Um, well, it's Hollywood. No nobody ever talks about it. It's all behind your back. Such a funny guy on screen, but often fairly serious in interviews. He's adamant that he's not the type of guy that goes around cracking jokes or making people laugh all the time. How do you stay funny? Um, I don't. I don't. I find it much easier not to be funny and then just be funny sort of uh, when people... Ah, oh, there, see? There's someone who's very funny and beautiful and talented. No, that's all right. That's all right. You caught me right at the perfect moment when I was trying to make up a funny answer for something that wasn't funny. Right. And so I was proving to you how I don't stay funny. He's very funny. We know he's funny, but what's the secret to creating great comedy on screen? Can he tell which scenes audiences will like? You don't know until you see it on the screen, so you kind of just have fun in the moment, go with what you think is working, and um, usually you have, I think, a pretty good sense if you think something's not, if something's working. You can, I think you can usually feel it when it's not working. And perhaps he's so funny because it runs in his genes. Plenty of us know his dad for his role as Frank Costanza, George's dad in Seinfeld. But did you know his parents, Jerry Stiller and Anne Mira, were a successful comedy duo in the 60s and 70s? These days, they often make cameos in Ben's movies. Back when Ben was growing up, the Stillers' Manhattan apartment was often filled with celebrities, and Ben would do his best to keep everyone entertained, something he's still doing today. But even though his life has been full of celebrities and show business, he doesn't take his own success for granted. Making movies is, you know, just is really, ultimately it's a lot of fun, <laughs> you know, and it's, a, it's actually, I think it's a real privilege to be allowed to, to make a film and to be given the money to make a movie, so I feel really lucky in that way. But, um, you know, it's hard work within what you're doing, but it's, it's, it's a really fun way to, I think it's, you know, fun way to spend your life and your time. These days, he's producing and directing some big budget movies, but he started out as a writer for Saturday Night Live. From here came his own show, The Ben Stiller Show, which won him an Emmy. Even so, the show only lasted one season. Nonetheless, it was a place for him to fine-tune his comedy skills. Uh, I think you just take chances and you kind of, um, you know, you have to go too far sometimes and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't and you just, you shoot a lot and try a lot of different things and then you uh, put it up in front of people and see what they react to and what they think is funny, what's not funny, what you think is funny, what's not funny, and you just have to take some chances and uh, try things. And these chances have paid off. Stiller's films gross an average of $75 million a pop. Sure, he might play the dumb funny guy, but in real life, he's far from it. I, I, he's really smart. You know, he has a very strong instinct for what's going to make a comedy work. He's incredible at uh, using people, just using people. Let's just leave it at that. He's a user. And uh, you have to be in Hollywood. But he really does. He knows how, how everyone's going to work their best. And he loves what he does and works hard. He'd always dreamt of directing, but the road to the mega success of Night at the Museum wasn't all smooth sailing. Stiller's directorial debut was actually with the film Reality Bites, a cracking movie that developed a huge cult following, but at the time didn't have much success at the box office. Another of his films to fall short of earnings expectations was The Cable Guy. The fact that this was the movie that turned Jim Carrey into the first comedic actor to be paid $20 million for a film may have had something to do with it. As a director, he decided he wasn't quite hitting the right notes, so he turned his focus again to acting. 
His big breakthrough role came two years later with There's Something About Mary, playing opposite Cameron Diaz. And another two years later, in 2000, came another big film, Meet the Parents, with a storyline that was eerily similar to his own personal life. I actually went through this experience when we were making the movie. I actually got engaged and had to meet my uh, prospective in-laws, so there was a kind of a parallel, you know, thing going on in real life. And uh, so it was, it was interesting. He was having a good run, so he decided to have another crack at directing. The film was Zoolander, and it was a huge success. Stiller directed, wrote, produced and starred in the movie that also featured his dad. In 2008, Ben had more success with his film Tropic Thunder, about a group of actors who go to shoot a war movie in Vietnam and end up in a real war. It begs the question, how did Ben come up with the idea? Uh, you know, just really from uh, having been in movies over the years and heard stories about friends who went off to do war movies. I, I had a really small part in Empire of the Sun when I was young, and that experience was uh, pretty amazing. So, you know, there's been so many of these war films, and it seemed like there were so many actors who went off to fake boot camps and talked about it, and uh, as if they had some real serious experience. It seemed like there was something funny in that. In 2004, Stiller was nominated for a Worst Actor Razzie for five of the six films he was in that year. A record, and some of them are my favourite movies. He was nominated for Along Came Polly, Anchorman, Dodgeball, OK, Envy, and Starsky and Hutch. The only film he wasn't nominated for that year was Meet the Fockers. What do the critics know anyway? Fans love Ben Stiller, and his success at the box office proves it. At first, Ben says he was worried that his career was going to be confined to comedy. These days, he's just grateful he's had the opportunity to be so successful in the genre. Stay tuned now to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.